Let's bring it out. The chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Democratic Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey. Mr. Chairman, thanks so much for being with us. Earlier, earlier this week, uh, you had said we needed to do anything we could as a nation to compensate countries that were providing uh, fighter jets uh, to Ukraine. Uh, where, where do we stand this morning on that? Obviously, uh, Poland and the United States, uh, this seems to be the one issue that we haven't lined up on uh, shoulder to shoulder. Well, good morning, Joe. Uh, look, I think there are still efforts to find ways uh, to provide uh, fighter jets to the Ukrainian. I'm a little disconcerted by the uh, the European Command uh, General who, uh, who says that uh, they have jets that they haven't flown and uh, indicates that maybe there are uh, issues with the airports or airfields for them to take off. But we need to do everything we can to find a way to help the Ukrainians fight for their sky. Uh, and to limit the consequences, as we saw in the barbaric act yesterday on that hospital in Mariupol. Well, it seems that uh, the Foreign Relations Committee, as well as the United States Senate, uh, has been uh, bipartisan uh, for the most part. Uh, talk about uh, w what your committee's view currently is of the situation there and what the United States Senate should do uh, to continue in its aid to the Ukrainians. Well, I think we are one, as are the American people. Uh, polls that I have seen suggest that 70, 75 percent of the American people support uh, Ukraine uh, in its struggle to preserve its freedom. Uh, and uh, we have been forward leading on like my legislation that I call the mother of all sanctions, for which the administration, to its credit, has taken enormous elements of and put into effect. Uh, today, I hope, uh, on the Senate floor, we will pass uh, in a 13-plus billion dollar uh, Ukraine bill that will give them uh, more lethal uh, assistance, as well as we see from the pictures that just uh, took place uh, on your program, humanitarian assistance. And I believe there will be strong by partisan support for that as well. And then finally, we need to keep finding every way to tighten the noose uh, around Putin's neck uh, so that this barbaric war can stop. Chairman Menendez, good morning. Uh, obviously, President Zelensky has been calling again even today and for the last several weeks for a no-fly zone. He says close the skies, to use his term. That has been a non-starter, a pretty clear no from the United States and from NATO because of the implications of what that could lead to, an escalation that could turn into a world war. Is there anything that might change your calculus on a no-fly zone? Is there something you can see in this war that might, you can, might make you consider it? Well, look, uh, a no-fly zone uh, sounds antiseptic uh, when we say, let's just put up a no-fly zone. Obviously, a no-fly zone means that the United States and NATO uh, would declare the skies over Ukraine a, that a, impossible for any other entity to enter, and the only way, in this case Russia, uh, to enter uh, and enforce that no-fly zone is for U.S. and NATO uh, fighter pilots uh, to ward it off. And if if they fail to obey to ultimately strike it. Once you do that, you're in a war with Russia. Uh, I don't think that the support of the American people extends to that. Our heart strings are tugged every day that we see uh, the horrific pictures in Ukraine. Uh, but, you know, the fundamental question, what is in the national interest and security of the United States is what has to be answered. And at this point, I don't see our ability to engage in a no-fly zone, especially when we don't have NATO partners that are willing to engage with us. Let's bring in Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and associate editor of the Washington Post, Eugene Robinson. He joins us now and has a question, Gene. Uh, Senator, uh, the foreign ministers of, of Russia and Ukraine met today in Turkey. There was apparently no progress. There was uh, toward a, any sort of diplomatic or negotiated solution. How, how does this end? How does this um, uh, end other than in a grinding, perhaps months-long, um, deadly punishment um, of, of the Ukrainian people? And is there anything else the United States could be doing uh, to, to, to alleviate this, this horrific suffering? 
Well, you're right. It is horrific. And I think uh, that the world has largely come together in condemnation of Putin and Russia uh, is, uh, is a rather clear message. Uh, it also should be a clear message to China, uh, which could play a more constructive role, as China suggests it's walking down the middle. But all uh, of its apparatus echoes uh, the Russian line on what's happening in Ukraine. So uh, we need to continue to keep this coalition together. We need to continue to make it move forward on the types of sanctions it affects that will continue to have such a consequence, not only for Putin, but inside for the Russian people, uh, that they will clamor. Uh, we need to work on getting information into Russia about how many uh, of Russia's sons have died already uh, in uh, this uh, unjustified war and begin the public unrest there. Uh, we need to continue to assist uh, the Ukrainians uh, in both humanitarian and lethal assistance. Uh, but it, it, it will end um, when Putin no longer can uh, engage in a way that for which there is no absolute loss for him. Uh, you know, he, he will seek to find something uh, for an off-ramp. And whether or not uh, that can be provided is, is, is a real question. Otherwise, we're looking, for a long we're looking at a long-term consequence for the Ukrainians in the first instance and a real strategic failure uh, for Russia and Putin in so many different dimensions. The problem with that failure is that too many lives get lost in the interim. And uh, Mr. Chairman, speaking of China, this just broke on Reuters uh, an hour or so ago. Uh, China has refused to supply Russian airlines with aircraft parts. An official at Russia's aviation authority was quoted by Russian news, news agencies as saying on Thursday after Boeing and Airbus halted supply of components. Uh, so uh, can we anticipate? Uh, are you hopeful that, that China will uh, at some point start uh, applying more pressure like this on the Russians to go to the peace table? Well, look, I certainly hope so. I mean, part of uh, what I have been advocating is a strategic full court press globally by the State Department and our allies so that those countries that have not joined us either in uh, the U.N. vote or in sanctioning Russia seek to do so. And for China not to be able to get away with uh, getting all sides, which is what it's trying to do at this point. That's a welcomed, uh, a welcomed uh, action uh, by China, but there is a lot more they could do. Do. If China doesn't want to have more Ukrainian lives on its hands, it has the wherewithal to specifically of any country right now uh, to influence Putin in a way that might change his calculus. All right. Uh, Chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Bob Menendez, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.